hi and good morning from Canada thanks for joining me in my shop so in the last video I uh, rebuilt uh, and, and installed some capacitors underneath the chassis of this radio turned it on hoping to find that it at least worked as well as it did which is pretty poor but in fact it didn't seem to work really at all so now I'm curious about how it is I've improved things and the result hey and the result is a cat has shown up. Okay, Shadow, you want to help me right from the start today, eh? What do you think it is? Do you think it's the tubes? Probably not. Do you think it's these crazy resistors? Over here. What do you think? Probably not. Do you think it's this thing? Take a close look at that. What's your assessment of it? No, this can't. With the antenna injecting the signal here, I'm past this defective part already. So no, this can't cause it. Shadow, come on. Give me something to go on. Maybe point to it. Sniff it out, sniff it out. Now, ah. That's why it takes a long time to fix these things for me, being a person. I don't sniff out the problems well enough. Hmm. Yeah, stick your head right in there. <laughs> so I think what I want to do today is simply uh, turn this guy on and poke around a bit, check a few voltages, inject the signal here and there, try and get a little more understanding of, uh, of, uh, of where it's working and where it's not. Does that sound like a good idea, Shadow? Uh, there's just too many things to look at. Don't chew on stuff. No chewing, no licking. I think she found a little piece of string back here to chew on. <laughs> Come on, don't chew on the old speaker. Moving on, moving right along. Well, I don't think I can fire it up with Shadow up here. just a little nervous about having the cat up here because there is some exposed high voltage here and there. Shadow, you gotta beat it, okay? You're more entertaining than anything that goes on in this shop, but you've gotta beat it now. You've been around you've been around a couple times. Okay, you can say goodbye. Say goodbye to the camera on the way. Okay, so what we'll do, I think I'm going to be going to be wanting to inject the signal, probably start off right in that, in that realm. Now when the radio did work last time, it was very weak, but I was able to pick up a station with it. I was kind of hoping after changing those capacitors it would just be that much that much better and easier. But maybe in fact it hasn't changed at all. Okay, so I need a cord here. generator. Put the camera over here and make it a wider shot. I think I sometimes I don't get enough on the screen here to make it easy for people like yourself to follow what I'm up to. Okay, I'll turn on the radio and just check it briefly and make and, and just see what it's doing. volume control on this radio only works right in the antenna circuit to reduce the amount of signal from the antenna reaching the rest of the radio. It's right, 
It's right at the very, very front. Oh, no. Come on. Okay, listen. Listen to me. There's high voltage over here. Don't touch these things. These things I've just pointed at, and now you want to know more about them. It certainly sounds like an electrical breakdown to me. Yeah, these tubes are ice cold. called. Didn't I say that already? Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, cat's out, door's closed. It's very hard. Very hard to see these tubes if they're really heating. Okay, so yeah, it's really hard to see for you, that's for sure. Two of them are heating, one is not. So this tube is not heating here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move one of these that is heating into that position, see if the heater shows up. radio operating too. Didn't seem to make any difference what I just did there. It's a little unusual. Okay, we'll take this one out. I should hear something when I plug it in here. Some change. So it looks like maybe this guy has bit the dust on me. That would be a shame. I, wouldn't, I won't bet on it though. Okay, so let's put another 26 in there. And all these 26s were tested good. Very good in fact. So, so I'll put it right in the front end. See what's heating. Okay, all three are heating. So we have a. So that, that might have been the whole problem. Just one dead tube sitting here. Now we have no antenna connected, so let's uh, connect an antenna. So I thought this the 
defective part was, was completely blocking the signal from getting into the radio, but it's not, obviously, I can still... Sure what that just proved. <laughs> 
So this guy's a this guy's definitely a, a dirty problem. A dirty problem here. Or is it just just loose connections? tight about that. Nothing tight at all. quite loose. So we got the volume control back. That's great. Some progress. So we have the radio essentially working, but it sounds terrible. Sounds to me like like way off bias, big fat hum on a on a grid somewhere. I'm not sure. Hear a hum, can hear this garbled sound. All that sparky crackling stuff, that could just be noise here, not the radio itself. Any radio might sound just like that. Um, I've got some adjustments here that I'm not ready to play around with yet. All these adjustments here, these are all little capacitors, mechanic, like right out here, right in front of you. They're not contained at all. Dielectric is sitting right here, and you just squeeze down or, or loosen up, just like just like any trimmer, really. Just 
probably consider these the early versions of capacitor trimmers. And uh, a lot of this has to do with neutralizing this circuit and stuff I'm not that familiar with. So not ready to fiddle with these yet. The most they can do, I think, is uh, affect the strength of the radio. I can turn this down now. It can affect the, the overall strength of the reception of the radio and also uh, introduce or null out squeals, feedback, weird sounds like that. We're not getting any of that right now. And I think when you have the radio performing at its best, you're on the verge of going into some kind of oscillation. And under this condition, the radio becomes super sensitive and uh, will receive weak signals uh, better. So I think uh, when I eventually get around to those, that's what I think I'll be doing anyway, is just bringing the performance up to the point where it's almost squealing. Frankly, not sure. I mean, I really, really never seen these before. And if I have, I didn't know what they were and I ignored them. So, the next step in making this radio work better, I, I, I don't think it's this. I don't think this is going to help us make it work much better. This essentially is some kind of tuning deal with the antenna, I believe. Sometimes these these gizmos here uh, are actually related to uh, more of this feedback, neutralization uh, type scheme that's going on in these radios. I don't think this one is, though. It seems it's right on the antenna line, but we'll have to check. Uh, where did our radio station go? Oh, there he is. We could look at this on the scope and see what it looks like. You know what we could do? We could look at the output from the radio as it's appearing, let's say, on this grid resistor and see what is being fed from the radio into the audio part. That sounds like fun. Like, let's, let's give it a, I mean, we can hear what it sounds like, so how much of a surprise can it really be? Okay, well, hey, just getting things ready here. Uh, and right away I made a, an observation that I think is pretty interesting. So, this is the ground lead from the scope. My scope is grounded to the power system. ground should be the same effect. Yep. Now it's a little hard to appreciate, but the radio right now is plugged into an isolation joint, an isolation transformer. And uh, the result of that is there's no relativity to ground, I guess I can put it that way, to earth. So until something is connected, this whole thing is just kind of floating here, uh, a gigantic antenna in all respects. I put this on, and it changes that quite, quite dramatically. So not to say if I plug this into an ordinary outlet it would somehow have the same effect, because it's only a two-pronged plug going into the primary of a transformer over here in the power supply. So normally, this kind of power ground is not connected unless you've done something to make that happen uh, when you're operating this radio. So I'm sure, I'm sure this radio, when it was sold, came with strong instructions. Put a big antenna in your backyard and connect this thing to earth through some kind of ground rod, substantial ground rod. I'm, I'm sure that would be part of the instructions here. But I don't normally connect anything to earth in my shop here. Nobody really does anymore except ham guys and stuff like that. Nobody even thinks of these kinds of things. It's been 50 years since anybody talked about a pounding a ground rod in their backyard. I just, uh... okay, enough rambling. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Maybe it's not enough rambling. Maybe I need to ramble, ramble some more.
radio went quiet when I connected that. So, almost quiet. Supposedly, that is what is heading into the audio circuits here. Turn up the volume. Okay, so the radio is still working. That doesn't... That looks pretty good to me. Let me just make this a little less... Um, you know, would I be able to see the garble that I hear? radio station in behind that. Trace extends way down, but it doesn't go up nearly as high. It's even more apparent now. So that might suggest some biasing is not correct. antenna signal in, skip a few of these stages, try to feed it in up in this area, as I've done that before. Let's get that radio station going here. Where are you? Where'd he go? right on this plate here. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. For rubbing off the numbers. <laughs> Explain. I guess I don't necessarily complete all my thoughts. Huh. I've lost it. 
okay. And we can find it back. Now, the other time when I did this, it seemed to me the radio was In some ways, it worked better when you injected the signal further up. Now that was that was the way it was. Let's see how it is. Hang on to your ears here. Quieter putting it in here than putting it in there. Watch what you're doing here. You know what? Just been thinking about this. Maybe I should restore this this gizmo here next. I mean, it's an obvious problem, and it can't be helpful that it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And maybe it's causing problems the way it is. Maybe it's still, you know, there's some wires coming over to it in here. Maybe they're still hooked up, and maybe there's still stuff going on here, even though it doesn't seem to be the case. is this piece back here and what I'm guessing is somebody just disabled this thing completely but that may not be the case it may still be completely wired in and I'm just going along with it so maybe that'll be the next topic there I think that's what I'm gonna have to work on next wait one second here Definitely uh, something coming. This side looks like a ground wire to the chassis, and the other side looks like it goes into the coil arrangement. Somehow that is then conveyed to this moving coil through some. Uh, this looks like a grounding. I don't know. I have to look at the schematic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's what we got to do next. For sure. Okay, well, I'm not quite sure what changed here. I was just getting ready to shut everything down and uh, tune the radio a bit, and presto, I got the radio station signal back. So I got the antenna connected to the main antenna input line. I don't know why I didn't get it before. Now we can take a look on the scope and really see what this. Okay, so we're looking at what we're listening to. Well, one of the things that looks a little odd to me is the bright straight lines that are showing up here along the uh, zero axis, along the x axis. When you look at a signal like this, you don't normally see these very bright lines. I suspect that that what this is telling me is one of the tubes is kind of in cutoff much of the time until there's a signal presented to it. 
don't know if that's true. You know, that's just what goes in my head. Um, let's cut off the antenna here. So that's a pretty darn straight line there, isn't it? Put it back on. Crank up the volume. It is up. That's full volume. Oh my gosh. I just kind of floored myself here. Unexpected. Nothing like an unexpected flooring. I like that. You know what's going on? I bet you this piece back here that's broken is making intermittent connections. suspicious that this has been disconnected and abandoned. In fact, it's still connected, it's still doing its thing, it's just intermittent with this broken uh, broken spring connection back here. That's pretty interesting. I'm a little floored. Okay, uh, it's not, so fixing this is a simple matter now, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, you can spin this right around. There is no wire to break. Oh yes, there is, what am I saying? That's exactly how it got broken in the first place with uh, this piece back here. That's exactly how it got broken. And just to continue with it, if you look at the front part here, you can see a pin. See a little pin moving just in front of my finger, wiggling back and forth? That pin is supposed to strike a stop, but the pin has been bent. It's been forced into a position where it no longer hits the stop and that allows this to spin around kabingo. Hey, if you own a SP600, a Hammerland SP600, it's a wonderful big old radio, something you really want to take care of, watch out for the uh, BFO control. It'll do exactly the same thing. It can be forced past its stop really easily. And the next thing you know, you've spun a coil far enough to rip the wires off it. And most SP600, I shouldn't say most, but many of them have suffered that, that injury. So, okay. Well, that's kind of neat. Now, where are we? So we were looking at the output. It looks kind of funny. I do have the scope connected, which is probably throwing the, uh, could be throwing everything right off here, in fact, with the scope on there. Let's take it off. radio just seems to have a mind of its own. Every time I turn around, it's... So is, is that the radio, or is that something coming in on... Uh...
where they blah, 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 go. Such inconsistent performance here. Meanwhile, check out the scope. What is going on? Okay, no, that's not connected to anything. That scope is completely open. <laughs> Strangest looking pattern on there. You know, the scope is kind of close to the radio. That, that stuff's coming. What am I? <laughs> Excuse me for being distracted, but this is where I have lots of fun, okay? Weird things happen, I get real interested in them. Weird thing being this very strange pattern on here from a scope lead. It's just hanging open here. saying this is in an isolation transformer power power supply transformer so this whole thing is kind of floating here electrically uh, apply a ground to it let's, let's apply a, uh, apply this ground and watch the scope what about it eh? say what is going on what's going on is this whole radio right now, in my view anyway, the whole radio is resonating somehow. The chassis is resonating. It's involved in something going on here, which is allowing it to, to oscillate. That would be a better word than resonate. It's allowing it to oscillate, produce this signal powerfully enough that, look, my scope is picking it up. I'm just getting it close here. That's pretty crazy stuff. As we're hearing a hum, it's probably related to the same put this on, the hum stays but all the weirdness goes. The hum disappeared entirely. What's going on? I don't know, interesting effect. I'm not sure what I'm really seeing. The real problem is that 60 cycle hum there. That's really what we need to get rid of, is that thing. 